The loss of a child is not something that any of us ever want to experience, but my guest today experienced that, went through 17 years of tragedy, and was able to come out the other end with a very inspirational story about love and loss and the death of his son, and then some terrific insights about other realms for you and me. His book is Beyond Reason. There it is. Lessons from the Loss of a Gifted Child. My guest today is Dr. Greg Corbin. Welcome to the show. Oh, thanks, Michelle. Thanks for having me on. This is a story about the loss of your child, which is horrific, and none of us want to go through that. But it is inspiring because of everything that you got out of it at the end. And actually, what was interesting to me was that you didn't just sit down and write the book three months later. It took you a whole number of years, a long time to process everything that had happened. And that actually, in a strange way, makes me feel better because it does take a long time to process our grief, doesn't it? It's... um I kept trying to write. I had so many unusual things that happened. Uh, for starters, uh, Brian told us he was going to die six months before he did, and there was no medical reason to suspect that. And we really couldn't understand what was happening. And then he gave himself a going away present, the, uh, a going away party, uh, the day he died, and left us notes and things like that. And I started writing because I couldn't uh, understand. Uh, how all these paranormal things happened. But the paranormal things kept happening. And uh, really, that's what helped me heal. But it took a long time. It was really the book. I was writing things uh, down to remember them and try and put them together. But it was still a tragedy. And only at the end uh, did it complete itself and turn into kind of a completed story. But I had to have lots of help, uh, lots of teachers along the way and other losses that helped me to complete uh, the book. Um, kind of a, it's kind of a backstory, but nobody ever had less talent for writing than I did. <laughs> and nobody ever had less interest in writing. But, uh, and I was hoping that somebody else would tell Brian's story because it was so inspirational that a child, he was a, a very gifted, happy uh, child, that he could teach us so much um, through his death. But nobody would tell the story. I told the media, and nobody in the media would tell the story. At least they wouldn't tell the true story. They'd either distort it and change it, or they wouldn't tell any of the mystical things that happened. I grew up as a scientist being tr being uh, told that there was absolutely no evidence, good hard evidence for paranormal phenomenon. And here, this was like a hundred people knew that Brian told us he was going to die. And then a lot of people came to our house and saw his goodbye. He said, uh, put a, a note on his door, Brian's on a trip, don't worry about me. And so I thought, well, this is the perfect chance. Um, the media would really want to know this. People would really want to know this. But the media absolutely would not report it, or they would distort it. Uh, he was on national uh, radio. There was a radio show. And on that, just like you said, they said that uh, knowing he was dying of terminal heart disease, he wanted to score a run more than anything, went out to the baseball uh, field, huffing and puffing, and staggered around the bases and collapsed on home. Uh, and died, you know, like his final wish. And that's not at all what happened. He was, like, perfectly healthy as far as we knew. And uh, there was no reason to suspect that. But I couldn't understand why the media wouldn't tell a true story that I thought most people would find inspirational. Do you think that's because, as human beings, we need to make sense of things, and it makes seems to make a lot more mental sense to us if he died of a disease, and that makes us feel better that... Same thing's not going to happen to us. Well, for sure. It's good that people keep things in their nice, uh, reasonable world. Uh, but there's a whole lot of worlds out there that are not in our reasonable world, and, and kids like Brian uh, keep reminding us about these things. And getting out of our reasonable world, going beyond reason, which is the title of the book because that's what Brian did to me, 
is he brought me out of this into all these other possibilities that are so much more wonderful and so much more intelligent and fluid um, that uh, we really need because our reasonable world right now is not sustainable. One of the one of my teachers was Joseph Chilton Pierce, who wrote the book Magical Child. And it turns out that he lives about half an hour from my house. And I just happened to, to meet him, and he became kind of a mentor to me. But one of Joe's main points is that children have a natural access to all this great intelligence that the universe has. And that uh, if we allowed them to, uh, they could be really a source for teaching us, the adults, like Brian did. Brian was a great source of, uh, of uh, inspiration. So it turns out the one person in the whole planet, the best person in the whole planet to help me understand a magical child like Brian was in my own backyard. And when I was ready for him, he kind of showed up. And he it took many years for him to teach me all the things that that were possible. And since then, when I'm around kids, I am... If I have a problem and I don't really understand what to do, I'll ask them. Uh, they don't know space and time, but they know all the they know all the major concepts. And uh, uh, as far as like the eternal concepts that uh, that um, can be useful. I, so I love like that. when my I just wanted to really hit home on that point because I love that you ask the children what you should do if you're stuck in a dilemma because they don't understand space and time. Now, if we just sit with that for a minute, that's that's a pretty profound statement you're saying about how the children really can help us learn and grow and that they have some innate wisdom that maybe we've lost as we've gotten older. When I, um, when I was uh, taking care of uh, Brian when he was little, I was a physician very much in my head in academic medicine and um, didn't believe in magic, um, had to be very much in control. Couldn't write, couldn't write poetry, couldn't be artistic at all. Um, and once again, the backstory is that uh, if you want to be a good writer, you have to have an open heart. And one good way to do that is to have a broken heart. Uh, when Brian died, it broke my heart. And um, nobody would tell the story. Um, so I just I made a um, I made a, a request to Brian that if he could help me tell his story to become a writer so that I could tell his story, I would do the best I could. And um, through that, uh, the broken heart, the open heart, um, more and more coincidences kept happening. People would show up in my life. Um, I would learn from different things, different losses. Every time there would be a loss, something would come out of that that would give me a piece of a puzzle that would let me finish the book. Um, my mother, who I talk about in, uh, in uh, Stories of Loss and Healing, was, bless her heart, very creative, <laughs> but very difficult person. And after she died, um, all of the things that were part of her up in Chicago were no longer up in Chicago. They were everywhere, and they were part of me now. Yeah, for better and for worse. But I took her creative side and integrated it, and it that's what I needed, the final piece to finish the book. Um, I needed to be, I needed help, and actually, after she died, um, the ability to let go and let the words write itself, no longer to try and think about what I was writing, but just to go ahead and let the words write on the you know, flow onto the paper. Um, then the book naturally found its ending. So I would say to people that when the very worst thing that could happen, like the loss of your most beautiful, gifted possession relationship, um, just the most wonderful child you can imagine, out of that, and I would never request, I would never say, if somebody would say, would you let that happen again? Would you have any of your other children die so that you could go through this incredible journey and become a different person? I would say no. <laughs> I wouldn't do it. Right. It was not reasonable. Um, but um, the thing about that is that for all the horrible things and the tragedy, as many good, positive, wonderful things came out of it. And even though it wasn't my choice consciously in this world to, to go on that journey, um, the journey took me there. And so 
I hope that other people, when they read the book, uh, and they're going through all their own worst moments, can see that if they just allow the emptiness, uh, which is what grief is, uh, just hold that emptiness, it's a two-way street, and wonderful things can come out of it. It has unlimited intelligence and unlimited energy, which is really what physics tells us and mystical, you know, mystics tell us. Greg, it's been a real pleasure. The book's a very fast read. It is inspirational, even though it deals with uh, the tragic loss of your son. And I really appreciate you being on the show with me today. Well, thank you. It was a pleasure talking to you. 